Where do we start on this one? Uh, after completing 52 churches in 52 weeks, uh, one of the most common questions I got asked was, what was your favorite church? Um, I never had a good answer for that because I had a lot of favorites. But what no one has ever asked me, though, is what was your worst church experience? And that is pretty clear cut uh, from what, uh, what I'm about to tell you. So uh, the very first work church visit I ever had, it was unplanned. Um, I was actually planning to go to an atheist church by reader request and had to call an audible. And I ended up uh, at a declining uh, prosperity gospel mega church uh, outside Dallas, Texas. And at this church, I quickly found out uh, their celebrity pastor was doing a sermon series trying to capitalize off the bestseller erotica thriller Fifty Shades of Grey by titling his upcoming book after it. Uh, he, uh, I also got herded to, and basically got uh, pulled from the seat that I was at, uh, moved up so I, they could fake social proof uh, that this church actually had more attendance than it actually was there. And then on top of that, uh, the sermon itself, the pastor started uh, defending his use of the word jackass to describe non-believers, and then started talking about King Solomon's sex life. And on top, and I almost forgot, um, I basically was implied as a stranger danger uh, when I took a wrong turn uh, getting lost. So... Uh, anyway, uh, my name is David. <laughs> uh, I'm the author of uh, a book called 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. You can find it on Amazon. I'll put a link into the description below. Um, you can read more about my visit on, in the book. Uh, it's Church 17. And um, in the book, I didn't mention this church by name. Um, I, I really wanted to paint a positive light for a lot of the churches I was going to. And if, and I'm human, I have biases. If there was a church that, um, that I felt I could not honestly give a fair assessment after visiting their church, I just wouldn't put their church's name in there. Um, after, um, several years after this church, particular church visit has passed um, and the negative influence that I've seen this church do, especially when it comes to their prosperity gospel and um, what they have multiplied negatively to other churches. Um, I think I, I try to read some, Paul, some of Paul within his letter to the Galatians, basically talking about how uh, to those church leaders and elders, how easily uh, the word of God can be perverted. And after visiting this particular church, I think it's 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 fair to name them. So, and I'm not going to do that proactively. It's just going to come up. So, um, week 17. So, when I got there, um, I pulled in the parking lot and immediately, even just right on the street lamps, uh, there were promotional advertisements promoting 50 shades of they. And trying to capitalize off the bestseller at that time, 50 shades of gray. So I don't know what the pastor was thinking. Maybe he's thinking, hey, I can capitalize if people type in 50 shades. As I later learned, the sermon series actually got on Netflix. So if someone did type in Fifty Shades, they'd see the erotica thriller, the movies, and then they would see his sermon. I'm guessing that's why they did it. I don't know. Um, when I got inside, I was instantly greeted by an associate pastor. And, um, you know, he welcomed me, asked if I was a first-time visitor. I said yes. And uh, in exchange for my name and address... Um, he gave me this little uh, gift bag, and inside the gift bag, 
uh, just a bunch of different types of um, advertisements in here. So um, I'll go into this in a little bit when I actually start looking it over. Um, now, when I was talking with him, uh, I think I kind of had my first tip that something wasn't all right. Uh, he started asking, you know, how I heard of the church, and I told him, you know, hey, I'm, I'm trying to visit a new church each week. Uh, randomly came across your church. Uh, he asked where I was from. I told him Wisconsin. And with this being in Texas, he's like, why, why are you really here? And I think that kind of tipped me off that there was something going on um, that he wasn't going to let me know about. So uh, inside the actual the church, um, they, the doors were closed for the, 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 the service before. And uh, there was just, it looked more like a mall. And with all these storefronts, it looked like a bunch of gaps. There was a, a bookstore where they were promoting more Fifty Shades of Day. They had posters. They had the pre-order books where they had people going around trying to get pre-order, sign people up for the pre-orders with people wearing the Fifty Shades of They shirts. Um, I didn't talk with these people, but I didn't really want to. I'm an introvert. Um, when I started, now granted, at this time, I'd never seen a church like this before. I was really in search of millennial Christians, young Christians, because every church I had been to, every church I was used to, it was usually baby boomer generation. I didn't really know a whole lot of Christians that were about my age. And I was taking a bunch of pictures within this church, and I was just going everywhere I could. And after I walked out of their bookstore, I, I saw this, this pillar that was dressed like the tree of good and evil. And I thought it looked really neat, so I went over there, took a picture. The picture didn't even turn out. But I had a lady yell at me across the room, Hey, no cameras allowed in here. There's children here. And what I didn't realize is I had accidentally wandered into a little area um, just outside the children's ministry area. So some parents started coming out with their kids. I wasn't going to take any pictures of kids, but the way that she had to yell and get a reaction from other people to see her. Now, granted, I get it. You know, if someone's trying to take pictures of kids, you're going to be defensive. For me, I just was lost. So to be implied as a stranger danger, holy cow, is that embarrassing within a church? Not only that, but then there was a police presence outside uh, because this church attracted enough people to have a police officer or two on site. So I started getting worried that I was going to be arrested and pulled out of that church. Very paranoid. Uh, eventually, um, a, a younger lady came up to me and she started talking to me. And as I found out, she was a greeter. So we kind of just shot the breeze, talked a little bit, and then she went off to whoever she was going to talk to next. And I thought it was really neat uh, to have someone uh, just randomly start talking to you. And it kind of struck me that, okay, I'm carrying this bright blue bag that is designed for first-time visitors. She, these greeters probably, this is a target for them to talk to someone to get them involved within the church, which I, I thought was a really good idea. Uh, the doors opened, and um, I was able to take a peek um, at the different types of stuff that they gave me. So let me see if I can pull it out here. Uh, I, I do another video um, called Free Gifts for First-Time Church Visitors. So I've, I've done a video on this real briefly in the past. Uh, but what they gave is they gave a $5 Starbucks gift card that I, I just never used. Um, they gave this little bookmark where you could get another free coffee within their bookstore. A um, bunch of other advertisements. Um, I think two of these are actually for tithing. Uh, what I thought was really odd, though, was a lot of these materials, they didn't really mention anything about Jesus. Um, they had a top five things you want to be a part of at Fellowship Church. And 
very colorful. Uh, the, every description is very Twitter short. But the number one thing to get involved at in this church is to, you guessed it, pre-order the book. Nothing in here about reading the Bible within their top five. It's a bunch of conferences and groups and universities. Nothing about the Bible. Then they had a what they called a 90-day challenge. And with the 90-day challenge, uh, I'll just read it here for you. If you're not tithing already, a great way to start is with the 90-day tithing challenge. We commit to you that if you tithe for 90 days and God doesn't hold true to his promises of blessings, we will refund 100% of your tithe. So tithing with a money-back guarantee, and you wonder why the prosperity gospel gets a bad rap. Uh, on top of that, they uh, had a Malachi 3.10 passage where it says, uh, I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. So basically, it's twisting scripture to make you believe that you will profit for believing in God. Um, inside the church, uh, there was a... It wasn't a church. It wasn't a worship service. There was a this uh, Siri-like voice that was trying to hype hype you up with a five-minute countdown, and it kept calling it the experience. It wasn't a church worship. It was the experience. And pretty soon, I had a lady uh, in granted. I took a seat maybe about four rows from the front. And there was a bunch of other people around me. We were all pretty split, a bunch of seats in between us. This was before social distancing and all the COVID stuff. And this lady with a headset came over, and she was direct. Like, she, there was no gentleness about this. We were voluntold, hey, I need everyone up here in the front, no empty seats. Mo start moving. It was extremely rude and crude the way that she said this to us all. So it's like, all right, whatever. So we all got out of our seats. We all started moving to the very front. And as I later learned, uh, we were basically moved in our seats to fake social proof during the sermon so they could do a camera shot of the pastor preaching. It wasn't even long. We were only on, uh, on for about a second or two for this camera shot. But that was, this church was about 50% at capacity. The other 50% was vacant. But um, they were trying to do their YouTube videos. Um, my understanding is they also uh, started selling this for Netflix. So they wanted, they wanted butts in seats. So I get it. But when you're, going, when you're going to church for the gospel, and then later to see that you're basically being moved and pawned uh, just to help them with their social media, it just feels, it just felt really weird. Um, when the church service started, um, one thing I really did like is there was a lot of young people involved. And that was on stage, that was when it came to the production, that came when it, that was apparent with the lights and the cameras, lights, camera, action. Like it was very young people that were helping out and volunteering. And to me, that kind of was impressive because when I was growing up, I was an, you know, an acolyte. I was an altar boy kind of thing. And there wasn't much thought or anything to it. With this, like they actually were doing something that they could use for a future career to see if they liked it, maybe for a future job at a very early age. Uh, so that, I thought, was probably one of the biggest positives that came out of the visit. Um, the celebrity pastor, his name is Ed Young, and I knew nothing about him um, when I first saw him up on stage. Uh, he has a very commanding presence on stage. Uh, he looks a little bit like, um, some, like George Hamilton, if you remember him from soap operas. Um, he had this firepower behind his words. At the same time, he was trying way too hard to be hip and cool for all the younger type of people there. So he always had to have some kind of angle 
to make himself look cool. So if he was describing the Holy Land, he had to initialize it. It was the HL. And when it came to King Solomon, he had to sing his name every time. King Solomon. He did it a lot better than I did. But the thing that really irked me was he was talking about the they in your lives and who are they. And he started talking about yoking up with believers and how back in those days you would never yoke uh, a clean ox with a dirty donkey. So when it comes to your life, when it comes to non-believers, uh, his quote was, why would you want to be with a jackass? And he kept defending his word, his word choice of jackass because, hey, it's in the Bible. I can say it here on stage. And then he started talking about later in the sermon about King Solomon's sex life, how he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. And he was having more sex than a porn star. And I don't even know how he was able to relate that, uh, I think, with non-believers. I'm guessing he was just sleeping with non-believers. I guess that's what he was going for. But just how he was trying to be cool and hip and of the world with the different things that he was saying felt really fake and inauthentic. And I, I, it's been a long time since I've seen the sermon, but it's continually bothered me. Uh, for a very long time, because Fellowship Church, the FC as they call themselves, I'm sure there's some really great people there. Um, when it comes to the leadership and direction of the church, it's a cupcake church. What do I mean by that? Well, it's the, it was a bloated sermon. You, They fill you up with this artificial sweetener of God's word. They dazzle you with all these bright lights. They sprinkle in a little bit of scripture. They, they bring in all this type of fluff and cotton candy and all this stuff to make you fattened up with what they're trying to preach. And you walk out with this spiritual sugar rush because as soon as I was done, like I felt invigorated. I was, I thought this was one of the best church services I'd ever been a part of. And the more that I started to learn what this church actually was all about, the more it, it hit me where there was no fruit. There was no meat. There was no substance. It was a bunch of empty calories for what he was trying to preach. He was trying to be of the world. He's trying to be cool. He's trying to be hip. And it just fell flat. The more I kind of picked apart and try to learn what just happened. Now, what's really weird is what happened afterwards. And this is something that I don't touch on at all in the book. Um, I wanted to review the sermon. So when I did a YouTube search, 50 Shades of They, I started seeing in between the 50 Shades of Grey trailers and interviews and everything else that those actors and actresses did, I started seeing other churches that also did the Fifty Shades of They sermon series. And at first I thought, like, who would steal, who would plagiarize this sermon? Not just a sermon, but an entire series. And the more I saw, the more churches actually did this. Uh, so I started taking a look, and I... I understand that Ed Young, he does another website called creativepastors.com. And what he does is he sells his sermons. He sells the promotional advertisements all for profit. So the 50 Shades of the sermon series would sell for 66 bucks. The little trailer and advertisements, he would sell that for 15. And it really struck me in terms of, okay, now this opens up a whole nother can of worms. If you're a pastor, like don't, if you're, well, let me, let me back up. If you're in the congregation, like, don't you want your pastor to be reading his own Bible, to be crafting his own thoughts, to be using his own experiences? Why would a church pay another church 
to, it's not even borrowing, to buy a sermon series and use all that pastors, the celebrity pastors' thoughts and ideas, and then incorporate that into your own church. And that bothered me even more, especially coming from Ed Young. And the more I learned about Ed Young, the more you'll find YouTube videos of him where uh, a news investigation found he was using church funds to fund a private jet all so that he could use it for fishing trips. Uh, when they cornered him about it, of course, the church answer is, oh, no, no, we're, we're using that to preach the word of God, even though the church members themselves had no idea that this private jet existed. Uh, there's other videos where he did a circus-themed sermon, and it took him five minutes to even mention anything about Jesus or Christ, uh, because it was too busy describing circuses and all the sights and sounds with that. So uh, I think probably the biggest thing is the one sermon he did where he basically shouted at the congregation, you know, if you can't tithe, don't come back. And the more I learned about this church, the more disgusted I felt, especially because I felt really invigorated when I left that church even after I'd been basically implied as stranger danger because of all the lights and the action and, and everything going around. It was all this fluff that got me excited. But when it came to actually solid scripture, um, good theology, Bible-based, it was there, it was sprinkled, but it wasn't, it wasn't true gospel. So, um, there's tons of other things I want to talk about in this, but I'm going to wrap it up on that. Uh, my name is David from 52 Churches in 52 Weeks. Um, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe uh, for future videos. Uh, this one is more of a negative one where I'm, you know, negative Nelly, church critic. Uh, I'll try and do a future video where I had some of the most positive experiences. Uh, so that one might be a little bit more up your alley. So thanks for watching and catch you next time.